What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode But before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic Which is very important and that the player ratings and potentials may vary depending on what database you're using And how they perform for you during the season you don't have to follow all the tips This is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those of you out there who may be new to the game and just want some help, or for those of you out there who may just be stuck for ideas on what players you could sign for a certain team in career mode. So yes, who to sign for is back tonight, guys, and I have another new team for you. And today, we are going to take a look at the championship winners, Newcastle United. Uh, one of my followers, Stephen, tweeted me, said, could you do a who to sign for Newcastle or Brighton as they've both been promoted? And I thought I'd do Newcastle first as they won the title and eventually move on to Brighton. Now, Newcastle, of course, are a four-star team. Uh, this year in the Championship, they were relegated last season and are already back to the Premier League for next season. Uh, they're a four-star team with a, what is their budget? I think it's £25 million, £25 million, £25 million, £25 million pound budget. And uh, a really decent team, obviously. And uh, their objectives in the first season are, as you would expect, win the Championship League title and also reach the FA Cup round of 16 as well. So two domestic aims there, which are critical objectives which, you know, they're, they're definitely, I mean, you know, they're achievable, let's be honest here, they're a four-star team, they should of course be targeting the title like they won in real life uh, in the game in the first season. And uh, reaching around a 16 is definitely something a four-star team can achieve. So the objectives, I would say, are fair. And uh, and this is what their team looks like. So as you can see, there's a lot of good players in here. For, for a championship team, it's obviously one of the strongest in what is a very competitive division. It's a really, really awesome side. And uh, in today's episode, I'm going to give you my tips on uh, what players to sign. And um, this is, just before we get into the episode, this is a really bizarre episode. <laughs> like there's, the, end to this, the end to this episode, the end to this summer transfer window is just, it's downright stupid. Stupid, but uh, hopefully you enjoy it regardless and uh, pay attention to what I always say at the start of the episode The signings aren't designed to be uh, realistic pay attention to that But uh, anyway, uh, they've got quite a few players in the contracts that come the end of the year I'd only give one deal that's to Freddie Woodman uh, the young goalkeeper 62 rated with 78 potential So he grows 16 ratings. I'll give him a new deal Let everyone else go and also they've got tons of players that are currently loaned out right now I would recall four players back to St. James's Park uh, Tim Krull uh, this guy who I can never pronounce the name of, I want to say Tovan, uh, the French winger, I can never pronounce his name, uh, Henry Saivet, and also CM Diong as well. I'd recall these four players. Now, as I always say when I recall players, I know some of you guys don't like it, I know some of you guys think it's unrealistic, but as I said a minute ago, these episodes aren't designed to be realistic. Uh, they're just me giving you the best tips I can, and when you recall those four players, you're spending around £2 million for four really decent players. In fact, three of those four players there are three of the four highest rated players currently contracted Newcastle in the game so it makes no sense leaving them out on loan bring them back to St James's Park it'll cost you a small penny it'll be a small dent in your uh, your transfer budget and uh, they're all very good players but as for new signings with Newcastle that's why you come to these videos what players would I recommend bringing to St James's Park with 25 million pound budget well, to be honest, with a four-star team and £25 million in the kitty, I wouldn't even say you need to spend that much money in order to really improve this team's chances of winning the title, but I would still splash all the money you got available, and my number one target would be this guy right here, Charlie Musonda, who I recommended a few times before. I really like this kid. Now, he's a 76-rated left midfielder, only 19 years old. He's Belgian. He currently plays for Chelsea right now, and of course, he's got the holy five-star, five-star for skill moves and weak foot. It's such a rarity to find someone with the 5 star, 5 star but this guy is absolutely fantastic 76 rated with 86 potential. Definitely someone to invest in and make him your future left midfielder for many years to come. He He's just got some unbelievable stats. Even at just 19 years old, he's already really quick. High ball control, high dribbling and again the thing that I'm really drawn to is of course that 5 star, 5 star which is just fantastic but uh, also as well, uh, you saw a big come in there for De Jong, one of the players I recall now when I recall players I I always say that you don't have to use them if you don't want to. You can sell them as well and get a pretty penny for them. Players like De Jong, who are 27 years old, they're not really going to develop whilst they're out on loan. So you may as well bring them back. And even if you don't plan on using them in the first team, you can sell them for a few million pounds. We sold them to West Ham for, I think it was five and a half million pounds and looked to reinvest in a new cam as well. So that's just one thing I wanted to add in right there. I know some of you guys don't like when I re uh, recall players, but you can sell them and, uh, and, and make some money from them when otherwise 
otherwise they'd be out on loan doing absolutely nothing for you so uh, yeah I sold him to uh, to West Ham Billich bought him for five and a half million pounds 500 grand over his valuation and again you can use him or sell him it's up to you and uh, it's just it, you know either or is better than leaving him out on loan but uh, Musonda, regardless of accepted his contract here, that was the first signing I made with Newcastle for £7.5 million on 50 grand a week wages on a five-year deal. Now, he's valued at £6.5 million. You probably are going to have to spend a little bit over that. But one of the advantages about buying Musonda is that he's not valued too highly at Chelsea in the game in the first season. Only sporadic first-team player status, which means you should be able to get him to close his base uh, to, to close to his base valuation. And uh, again, with, with those stats, with those work rates, those positions, LM and RM as well, he's He's, he's just too good not to sign, in my opinion. So definitely sign uh, Musonda. He will be my number one target for a Newcastle Karima. But also as well, if you are going to bring back De Jong and sell him, you would want a new cam, presumably. And I'd recommend this guy right here, Nadiem Amiri of Hoffenheim. 77 rated, just like Musonda, 19 years old, valued at £8 million. This guy's got four-star skill moves and a three-star weak foot. He can also play a little bit deeper and out wide as well. You'll probably have to spend a little bit over his valuation. I think... I think I spent, was it 11 million pounds to get hold of the guy, but he's a really, really awesome player. And this guy has 85 potential, very, very talented youngster playing uh, for Hoffenheim in Germany and, uh, and, and certainly someone I'd recommend picking up. Again, you're probably spending a little bit of his valuation in the end. I spent, was it I said 10 million pounds? Actually, not 11 million pounds, 10 million pounds on Amiri, but you're probably spending around 10 to 12 million pounds on the guy, but he's a really, really great cam. And again, it's, it all depends on whether you want to keep De Jong as a first choice cam. Definitely recalled De Jong, but it's up to you whether you want to sell him or keep him. For me, I would sell him, look to invest in someone better and younger, and Amiri is both of those things. Eight years younger than De Jong, and also one rating higher as well. Certainly someone I would say deserves to be signed for Newcastle. He's got some absolutely great stats. Agility 82, acceleration 78, balance 75, stamina 77 as well, dribbling 80, ball control 79, long pass 73, short pass 79 as well. Already just 19 years old, he's got some really good stats, and and he's just going to get better and better throughout the years at St. James's Park. But as for new signings with Newcastle, as I did say, you should spend your entire budget in the first season. I'd also recommend this guy as well in a holding midfield role, Alexis Blin, 75 rated, again, 19 years old, just like Musonda and Amiri as well. Uh, valued, I think it's 4.8 million pounds. Now, Toulouse probably won't let him go for valuation. You'll probably have to spend a little bit over his valuation to get hold of the guy. Somewhere between six to eight million pounds, I would suggest. However, However, this kid's on pretty low wages, just 11 and a half grand a week, so that's not really much. And he's a really, really talented youngster with 86 potential. So he grows 11 ratings, and he'll be your first choice defensive midfielder for many, many years to come at St. James's Park, both in the first season of the championship and when you get to the Premier League as well. He's already good enough to go into the first team, and he'll hold down that position throughout your entire career at Newcastle. A really, really talented young French midfielder, and again, definitely worth the signing. And once again, you will probably have to spend around six to eight million pounds on the guy probably not much more than that. Uh, I bought him for, I think it was 6.25 million pounds uh, I got hold of the guy for and um, and yeah, he's got some great stats already at just 19 and he got 86 potential. You've got to keep on building for the future. That's what these episodes are all about. Keep on looking for those young talents and uh, and this guy certainly is a young talent. Really, really great young defence midfielder and to be just 19 years old, yet already have some really well-rounded physical and mental stats, including 79 strength at just that young age. He's definitely someone to sign and again, for six point two five million pounds you can't really go wrong uh, I also sold Hydara as well for 1.6 million pounds and you'll see why in just a moment's time now Hydara is actually a pretty decent young left back he's only 23 years old I do believe he has 76 potential which isn't too bad but rated just 71 overall you can do better than him and they've also uh, obviously signed a, a new left back in the game uh, is it I can't pronounce the name but it's a, a Moroccan left back as well I can also play left midfield as well as I sold Sam Yobi to, uh, Sammy Amiobi to Ewood Park here, uh, brother of Newcastle legend Shola Amiobi. Um, but uh, you'll see I sold Hydara and Dummett. They've got a new left back in the game who you can't sell in the first season. It's pretty decent anyway, 79 potential. Now, you may wonder why I sold a few of these players here who I didn't need to sell as their deals weren't up come the end of the year. Uh, Rob Elliott, for example, here goes to Crotone, which is an interesting career choice for him there as he's uh, off to Italy to, uh, to spend his, uh, his mid-30s there. But um, I, I decided to do it because I thought to myself, well, I 
but I want to try and make this Newcastle team the best it possibly can be. And obviously, when there are young players like Dummett and Hydara who have mid-70 potentials, they're not bad players. You can keep them there if you'd want, or you can cash in and then look for someone better. And that's what I decided to do. Obviously, you don't need three, you know, uh, early, uh, low 70 rated left backs here. You may as well sell the couple you don't need and you won't be using if you've got one here already who will be a first choice in uh, Lazar, the Moroccan, and buy someone who could become first choice and much better than Dummit Haidara and Lazar in the future, such as this guy right here, Rafa Suarez, a Portuguese left back who's 73 rated in the first season, just 21 years old, but he's got 85 potential. Now that's 10 ratings higher than Dummit's potential, 9 higher than Haidara's potential, and 6 higher than Lazar's potential. So I understand that you might sit there and think, well, what's the point in, in swapping Dummit out there? What's the point in selling Haidara as well? But really, you don't need three low 70 rated left backs. You only need one of those guys and then sign another one once you sold two or, or got rid of two. And it's got better potential and will be your first choice left back as the years go by at St. James's Park. So that's that's why I decided to do that. It's it's probably not exactly the, the thing that most people would look to do, but I wanted to try and make this Newcastle team the best it possibly could be set up for the future, even though I only do one season in these Who to Sign for episodes. So I signed Rafa Suarez for £3.9 million, which was his valuation before it was decreased, uh, plus Paul Dummett as well. He's got some great stats, by the way. Technically, he's very well-rounded, mentally very well-rounded, physically very well-rounded as well. High medium work rates, very good for a fullback and uh, a freestyle weak foot as well. So a nice little sign in there and uh, not a bad acquisition, I would say. And again, when you've got Haidara, Dummett and Lazar, you don't need three of those left backs. Get rid of two, you know, keep Lazar and, uh, and sign a new one. That's my recommendation anyway. But uh, as for new signings as well, uh, I was basically out of money at this point. I'd uh, splashed pretty much all my cash on, uh, on new signings. But I tried to buy a couple more players on deadline day. I threw every single penny but £3 at Tammy Abraham, the Chelsea striker currently on loan at Bristol City, but in the game is a permanent Bristol City player. Uh, the youngster is just 18 years old, valued at, uh, I think it's three. 3.3 million pounds. He's uh, uh, 3.1 million pounds. He's uh, he's 72 rated though, and Abraham has 85 potential. A really, really great young talent in real life and the game. Definitely worth picking up from Ashton Gate because again, he's a permanent Bristol City player in the game, even though he's on loan from Chelsea in real life. Uh, I managed to get him for all of the money I had left plus Johan Gufran. And the reason I swapped out Johan Gufran is the same reason why I swapped out Paul Dummett for Rafa Suarez. And the same reason, as you'll see in a moment, that I swapped out Anita is because I had these three players on the transfer list since the first day I, uh, I started the Newcastle career. But uh, I didn't get a single bid for any of them. So I decided to swap them instead and, uh, and try it doing that way. So probably th this deal didn't really represent the best value for money. But I just thought I might as well do it because Gufran is out of contract come the end of summer. Um, you won't be giving him a new deal. So you may as well swap him and buy someone that has got a future at St. James Park instead. And that would be Tammy Abraham with 85 potential. And this is when things got really really, really weird because I just decided that as deadline day was here, I still had Anita at my club. He's a right back who isn't going to be first choice at Newcastle in your career. So I thought, why don't I try and swap him out for a future first choice centre back? And I literally just went down the list on SoFIFA of players that are young, play in the centre back role and have decent potential. And I just swapped Anita for every single one of them and thought, surely one of these clubs is going to say yes eventually quite a few of them did and then the most predictable thing happened and that was that I got a transfer offer for Vernon Anita on deadline day with about three hours left typical right I finally had a bid when it was too late for him and I was in the process of swapping him out to I don't know as many clubs as I could find really uh, for a new centre back and I thought that was really funny like I was thinking well he's, he's not going to get a new deal so he'll be leaving the club come the end of the season so I may as well try and swap him out for someone that's got potential and then with like three hours left on deadline day I finally get a bid for the right back from Hull I think it was but in the end it didn't matter uh, we had loads and loads of uh, clubs accepting uh, the straight swap deal for Anita and I decided to bring in I think it was George Sienz now I don't know if he has the most potential out of the four centre backs here I can't remember but he does have 82 potential so I thought I might as well sign him and um, you know for me I've always had this philosophy if a player has a deal up come the end of the year don't keep them here just look to sell them straight in the first transfer window that's always been in my opinion the best strategy so I bought in Sienz who's 
Yes, free ratings lower. Yes, in a different position, but has 82 potential, whereas Anita is not going to get any better. So again, just like the Tammy Abraham deal, it probably didn't represent great value for money. But again, we're thinking about the long-term future, so you may as well do it as Anita isn't going to get a new deal. And he won't be your first choice right back with the new Spaniard playing right back instead. So uh, yeah, in the end then, I spent £29.3 million on six new players and also raised £9.7 million pounds for selling some players as well, getting rid of some Deadwood and uh, selling a couple of first team players as well, such as De Jong. And the team ended up looking like this going into the first uh, first season. I thought I did some pretty decent business. I mean, I really, really did. You know, to buy six new players for just under £30 million, pounds, all of which have low to mid-80 potential, I think that's really, really impressive. And of course, we simulate the end of season in these episodes, see how the team would get on. A reminder, they were supposed to win the league title and reach the FA Cup round of 16. Well, it was highly surprised they did do the former. Uh, they ran away with the league. They won it by 10 points in the end. Brighton, uh, funnily enough, finished in mid-table in 12th place, which I thought was kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, Newcastle won the title with ease, as you'd expect, with 93 points, uh, one point fewer than they got in real life. Uh, the FA Cup, though, was a failure, no doubt about it. Uh, we didn't even get onto the tournament tree. Uh, of course, we were supposed to reach the round of 16. We didn't manage to do that. We were knocked out in the third round, and we didn't reach the tournament tree in the EFL Cup either. Uh, we were knocked out early by, I think it was City. I think it was City. Was it City? I can't remember. But uh, regardless, we lost to the English champions, Leicester City, in the third round, which I don't even think is that bad a result. And uh, in the end, I, I don't really think it's it's that big of a deal. In real life, we reached the fourth round before being knocked out by Oxford. So yeah, I, uh, I didn't really pay much attention to that. They did the main thing, which was winning the league title. And, uh, and as you would see, with this sort of team, if they weren't to do that, that would be a massive failure. So... That was the, uh, the Newcastle team then I assembled in the first season. And I have to say, I thought I did some really, really good business. You know, Musonda, 86 potential. Blin, 86 potential. Rafa Suarez and Abraham, 85 potential. Amiri, 85 potential. And also Sienz as well, 82 potential. I thought I did some really, really good business in the first season. And this Newcastle team looks really set up to go straight into the Premier League and already achieve a possible mid-table finish. It's a really, really fun team. And my closing sort of statement on Newcastle for a career mode is this. I would say this is a definite, a definite team to do if you're a beginner to career mode. Now, if you stumbled upon this video and this is the first video of mine you've watched, you just wanted some tips on how to manage Newcastle United, give this team a go. Give this team a go as your first ever career mode because they're a beginner's type of team. They're in a second tier uh, division in, uh, in English football. They are, in my opinion, the strongest team in the championship. You saw that in real life, winning the championship, albeit for a Brighton collapse towards the end of the season. But they're a four-star team. They've got a 24 five million pound budget some decent youngsters in there some some pretty decent talent already some players out on loan who you can recall and again with the objectives too they're they're definitely achievable in the first season i would say this is a beginner's career mode but certainly one which you'd have a lot of fun with once you've got promoted in the first season you're surely gonna maintain a place in the premier league and not get relegated again and become a yo-yo club this would be a really fun career to do and i would definitely recommend them especially if you're a newbie to career mode but that will end today's episode of you to sign for guys i hope you have enjoyed it if you did enjoy the tips then please do leave a like much love to you all enjoy your evening and i'll see you for the next episode of our who to sign for series very soon bye